if you do not know what a lambda expression is, you do not have to worry about that. Basically, if you want a simple exp explanation on that, it is like any method. You have a synchronous method, wherefore you will be able to await. And what is passed through here, you have some variables here, some parameters. So we are passed through some other thing that actually calls that lambda expression as you would call any method and pass on variables. So that's all you need to know about that. And first of all, we need to do an if and else statement. If and else. So let's do the else. And the else part is very simple. That will be await next. And that's it. Now, the reason we are waiting next is because we will be checking if the connection, the request, is the kind of request that we need to create that socket connection. If it's not, it will just go here to the next one. It, it will wait for the next request. And then it will again check if that request is actually WebSocket request. So, in the true here, in the logic here, we need to check if this one, if this request is actually WebSocket request. So, to do that, you write HTTP, you access that parameter here, and you access that. So, you do WebSockets then, and then you do is WebSocket request. That's it. And you do end end. Now, when you put in Boolean like that, and you don't and you have you're looking for true you don't have to do equals equals true it it already is that same thing so you don't have to write that and now we can move on to then the request path because we will be putting a certain request path so the a the http request uh, the websocket request and http request are two different requests so in that URL, you write HTTP, HTTP when you need HTTP request, and then you need WebSocket request, you write WS in front of the whole thing. So here we will do, we will do HTTP request path. Now one thing to note here, we aren't actually looking for the first part of the URL not for the domain, but we are looking for that route that goes after the domain. So this one, let's call it WS, and we will have that route like that in the front end, when we will be setting up the front end. And what I want to do now is I want to do another thread, to run on another thread. So I will be kind of waiting for various messages to receive those messages and what we will do we will receive that message and we will send that message back to the client to the front end so let's do await await task task run and then let's do another lambda expression a synchronous lambda expression with no parameters this time let's do it like that and what this will do, it will simply start running the whole thing and then it will move on. It won't be waiting for anything. We won't uh, kind of clog up the whole thing. So here we need a while loop. And the while loop will be quite simple. But before, before we go any further, we need to actually establish, construct that web socket. So to do that, we will need to go to, say, program.cs, although, let's go to program.cs, let's try that, although you could actually store it in any class file you want, anywhere you want, you just have to do public, static, and then you will see what happens next. So we do public, static, and then let's do system dot net dot websockets websockets 
system.net.websockets.websocket. Let's go at wb equals null this time. Now the reason it's null because we don't have that set up. We will listen for the connection and then once the connection happens, we will kind of construct that WebSocket into this WebSocket variable. So let's get back to the startup and let's go here before the while loop. Before, before the while loop happens, we need to access that program, program class, and then the, we need to access WB. And then here we do await await http web sockets accept web socket async so as you can see most of the stuff is asynchronous and now we are running that in the in the task run what we should do instead we should cut that out and we should run before the task run because we don't want to create unknown amounts of uh, of these task runs if we don't actually need them. So we accept that and we have our WebSocket open and running. Now here in the while loop we will be checking for the state of that WebSocket. So let's do program, program, wb, state. Very simply state equals, as you can see it is already suggested, System.net.websockets.websocket state. And let's see what kind of state we are looking for. We are looking for open state. Open state, and whilst it is open, we will be running that listener. If it's closed, we won't be running that anymore. So let's do now a little byte array. We need a little byte array. Let's do byte ray bt equals new byte 1024. That's it. We have our byte array here. And then now let's get WebSocket result. Let's do system.net.websockets and then WebSocket receive result we need. If we can find that, WebSocket receive result, we can. So let's call that RC now. Equals, um, let's do await program WB receive a sync. And now we will need to actually receive that stuff. So we need our byte array here into which we will receive everything and then we need another thing it's a it's something called cancellation token we don't see that yet we need a namespace for that and the namespace is using system threading so we have that and we have our cancellation token. Let's see, we need actually to do none. We won't actually be using a cancellation token. It's just that this method requires that parameter to be inserted. There's nothing we can do about it. And now we will send that same thing back. We will send it back. But before we do that, I'll just show you how to how to read that if you need to read it. So let's do string, let's do say uh, txt, the text, so let's do now system, text, encoding, encoding, not encoder but encoding, and then you need to select some encoding format for the actual encoding. So you, you will usually do something like UTF-8, this the one that's probably the most popular one. So let's do UTF-8 and now you get get string, get string and let's try to do BT, get string and we will get that string. Now we will try to send everything. So what we will do we will send that uh, string, not the BT. We could send BT right away, but I just want to show you how to 
convert the byte array to string and vice versa now. So let's do await program wb and then let's do send a sync. Send a sync and we will get get bytes now. So let's do system text and then encoding and then utf8 and then get bytes get bytes and then let's do txt and that should be all there is to do here with bytes now we also need to put in a format so let's do system again system dot net dot web sockets dot web sockets if we can find that and then web socket message type here we need web socket message type and the type is text as you can see you have close and binary as well we won't be going into that you usually will only need text and the binary is a binary file so let's do text this time and here we need to do something very important with web sockets we need to actually say true or false on the end of the message. Now you always do true unless you actually know that you need to do false. What it says here, it will, it will basically state that the message is over and it will stop sending and the front end will stop reading it. If you don't stop, it will think that there's more of that message coming so then this code will finish, it will still be waiting and everything will crash on you because you won't be able to send anything more and you'll get everything in that same one message. So you have to declare true as end of message. And now again, let's, let's add that cancellation token, that's the wrong one, cancellation token, which is none. None the cancellation token and that's it. Where well, we have it, so we have that, we have read, we read the string from bytes and then we read bytes from string. Everything seems to be in order now and we will later do the front end part.